Okay, shall I read um, chapter 13, paragraph 2? Do you want me to read it, or do you want to read it? Oh, I, I can read it. Okay. But then you have to speak to me. All right, I'll read it. It says, I mean, the question was, how does Paul's religion misrepresent God by its action? Mm -hmm. Paul's religion does not treat people as Jehovah does. The Bible says that false religions, sins have massed together clear up to heaven. For centuries, religions have meddled in politics, supported wars, and caused or approved the death of countless number of pe numbers of, pe of people. Some religious leaders enjoy a lavish lifestyle and demand money from their followers to pay for it. These actions prove that they do not even know God, let alone uh, have the right to represent him. Okay, thank you. Um, it seems to be fairly emphatic. I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, but your book seems to be saying that if a religion has any involvement whatsoever in politics or religion, then it cannot represent Jehovah God. It can't be Jehovah's representative here on earth. Have I got that uh, right? Uh, politics and wars, yeah, not religion. I mean, uh, uh, his people are relig religious as well, uh, but it is um, meddling in politics and wars. Any religion that does that cannot represent Jehovah God, is that right? That is correct, yeah. But then the Watchtower has a long history, the Watchtower corporations have a long history of involvement in both warfare and, and politics. During the First World War, when Judge Rutherford knew he was about to go on trial, in, the, in, the, in Zion's Watchtower for the 15th of May 1918, page 6257 of the Green Reprints, Rutherford promoted the purchase of the Liberty Bond. He told his American readers to buy Liberty Bonds, also called Liberty Loans, to support the American military in the First World War. He thought that would be a defence that he could use in court. Okay, so uh, what I would, how I would respond to it, actually, uh, Robert, is actually we just follow what the Bible says. Uh, so if you go to uh, the lesson 45, just on this point, and we'll come back to it then. Yes, okay. So, lesson 45. And uh, this is, uh, how can we show that we are neutral? By the way, Kieran is sitting beside us. Yes. yes. Hello, Kieran. Uh, Hello. Hello. Hi. Right. Uh, so would you please read it then, um, paragraph? Yeah, I can understand it. it, it it's saying that um, paragraph two, like Jesus, we do not get involved in politics. And it, the, the chapter is called What It Means to Be Neutral. What I'm saying is the Watchtower is not neutral. The Watchtower corporations are involved in politics and warfare and have been for a very long time. I understand, yeah. It, I'm just stating actually that uh, now Jehovah's Witnesses, they number into 8 point uh, whatever it is, more than 8 million. Uh, and the Watchtower publication, this is the latest actually, that it doesn't uh, uh, support uh, 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 warfare as well as in politics. It may have happened in the past, uh, as you uh, gave me the reference, uh, Robert, and uh, it was uh, early ages of uh, revival, you may say, because uh, in Matthew chapter 13, uh, what we have is the illustration of Jesus uh, of wheat and weeds growing together. The servants of the master said, shall we 
Go you need to give the no, you need to give the full proper reference. Yeah, you need to give the full proper reference for okay. anything that you read before you read it, so I can turn. Yeah, yeah, okay, I, I will open it. I'll just yeah. So that's Matthew thirteen, verse thirty-one. But I do feel this is a distraction. But okay, Matthew thirteen. Yeah. Uh, one three. Yeah, thirteen. Yeah. Right. Uh, and I am looking for that one. One minute. Give me a minute. Read and reads. Right. Um, it, it's verse 24 onwards. onwards, but I think it's not really That's relevant. Because my question is, why is the Watchtower, the Watchtower Corporations, I'm not talking about an elder like yourself, a Watchtower elder or a ministerial servant is very low level. I'm talking about the Watchtower Corporations. The Watchtower Corporations are involved in politics and warfare. Now, they don't tell you that. I believe they, they deceive you, they lie to you. But they have been for a hundred years involved in politics and warfare, and they're involved in both today. That's my problem. Um, okay. to, to, to go back to Rutherford, um, we don't have photographs of the event, but during the First World War, there was a National Day of Prayer, and Rutherford joined with Catholic priests and Protestant clergymen on a raised platform, praying for victory in the First World War during a National Day of Prayer. To me, this makes the, the Watchtower organization exactly like the other religions involved in warfare and praying for victory in the First World War. I would be very much interested in knowing, actually, uh, recent, um, recent involvement in politics as well as wars uh, by Watchtower as well. Okay. Perhaps if I focus on that then, would that be okay? Are you, are you there? Hello? Sorry, I missed that because there was... Yeah, there's, there's a data, um, some internet to slow down. Actually, you're frozen. Yes, I can hear well, you now. It's a little bit better now, I think. I am frozen. I can, I can, I can hear you now. Thank you. Perhaps if we shut down the pictures. Perhaps if we shut down the pictures. Uh, yeah, and we just do the audio. Is... <laughs> then yeah. there's less bandwidth. Okay. The video. Yeah. Yeah. Um, today, so uh, yeah. I was just saying actually some of uh, the, your statement or mine got uh, lost, but yeah, it is the recent I would be interested in. Okay, um, the Watchtower Bible and Tract Society of New York, the New York Corporation joined the United Nations as an NGO in 1992. Your then governing body member, Lloyd Barry, signed you into membership as an NGO, that means non-governmental organization, which is associated to the United Nations. But then, and now, you taught that the United Nations was of the devil. It's a, one of the satanic beasts of the Book of Revelation. So, what I don't understand is, why did the Watchtower Bible and Tract Society of New York join the United Nations if it taught that the UN is of the devil. Okay, Watchtower Corporation. So I am just a corporation. Um, corporation. Uh, in 1992, did you say? Yes, they joined the the United Nations as an NGO in 1992, and this was exposed in a Guardian newspaper article of the 8th of October 2001. The Guardian called you hypocrites, not you personally, sir, because I believe you're sincere, but it called the Watchtower 
hypocrites because it pointed out that you taught the UN was of the devil but you joined the UN. Yeah, so you have to give me some reference actually. Yes. Because I'm still uh, trying to locate it actually. Locate what? Uh, you know the Watchtower Corporation? Yeah. Uh, uh, joining uh, NGO. Okay. Um, if you go to the United Nations site, uh, a guy called Paul Hoffiel wrote a To Whom It May Concern letter on the 11th of October 2001. Okay. Paul Hoffiel is the head of the NGO section and he received thousands of inquiries about this from all over the world. Okay. So he had to write a To Whom It May Concern letter and I'll read the letter to you. It's on UN headed paper and it's dated the 11th of October 2001. I'm just loading it up. I got this from the United Nations. Whether it's still up over 20 years later, I don't know. Uh, but uh, it's dated 11th of October and it says to whom it may concern. Recently, the NGO section has been receiving numerous inquiries regarding the association of the Watchtower Bible and Tract Society of New York with the Department of Public Information, DPI. This organization applied for association with DPI in 1991 and was granted association in 1992. By accepting association with DPI, the organization agreed to meet criteria for association, including support and respect of the principles of the Charter of the United Nations and commitment and means to conduct effective information programs with its constituents and, its, and to a broader audience about UN activities. In October 2001, the Watchtower Bible and Tract Society of New York requested termination of its association with DPI. Following this request, DPI has made a decision to disassociate the Watchtower Bible and Tract Society of New York as of the 9th of October 2001. We appreciate your interest in the work of the, U of the United Nations your sincerely, Paul Hoffiel, Chief NGO Section, Department of Public Information, and it's written on UN headed paper, and it's signed by him, and it's dated the 11th of October 2001. Okay, so now, what you're saying is actually they joined, and then they wanted to terminate. Yes, the day yeah. after the Guardian newspaper article. The Guardian article came out on the 8th of October 2001 it called them hypocrites and they they applied to leave the very next day and they were granted yeah. disassociation the very next day after the Guardian newspaper article yeah so what uh, I would say actually that uh, they realized actually that they had made a mistake a serious mistake and that's why, Robert, they withdrew uh, uh, just the following day. No, 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 no. It was, it was when their hypocrisy was pointed out that they left. Okay. When their hypocrisy was published in the Guardian newspaper of London, then they oh. didn't want to get involved anymore. But the Watchtower yeah. organization is still connected to the United Nations today through other organizations um, there are several of them. One of them is called OSCE. OSCE okay. stands for the Organization for Security and Cooperation in Europe. Um, it's a political organization made up of European parliamentarians and it, over the years it has acquired religious hangers-on. Usually um, the two groups that almost attend every OSCE meeting are Scientology and various Jehovah's Witness uh, corporations. And the reason okay. for this is that what they're trying to do is to change the hate crime laws. Scientology and Jehovah's Witnesses want to have victim status. They want to be treated as victims and get the laws in Europe changed accordingly so that their religions cannot be, you can't dis disagree with them. It would be a hate crime to disagree with them. Now, OSCE has a number of meetings. It's a political organization. I'll give you one example. It's on um, 
um, Spanish government headed paper. You can see the seal of the Spanish government in the top left hand corner. Yeah. And it gives the ministry of the Spanish government. And I won't, I won't um, make you weep with shame with my poor Spanish by trying to pronounce it. But it's one of the Spanish ministries. This is an OSCE meeting that took place in Cordoba in Spain on the 8th and the 9th of June 2005. It was titled the OSCE Conference on Antisemitism and on Other Forms of Intolerance because that's what OSCE has moved in. Since it was set up in the 1970s to promote peace, it's moved heavily in the direction of political correctness and changing the laws to, um, to make hate crime uh, a crime so that you can't disagree. You, you can't, uh, you, you, you know, they're trying to enforce hate crime laws. Now, two Jehovah's Witness organizations attended this meeting in 2005 in Cordoba in Spain, and three Watchtower representatives. Mr. Gregory yeah. Allen attended, representing the Watchtower Bible and Tract Society of Pennsylvania. So this is not the New York Corporation, this is the Pennsylvania Corporation and representing the European Association of Jehovah's Christian Witnesses, today they've dropped the word Christian, is Paul Gillies and Marcel Gillett. So that's one of dozens and dozens and dozens and dozens of OSCE meetings that Jehovah's Witnesses attend. Yeah, what, uh, how I would respond to it, Robert, is actually Jesus Christ, actually, his wording is, actually, they are no part of the world, just as I am no part of the world. Quoting, actually, from John, chapter 18, that uh, Jesus is the judge, and he will judge uh, all those who claim to be his followers, and in actual fact, are not following him. So well, obviously, if if a religion cannot get involved in politics and warfare because it's some sort of Bible crime to get involved in politics or warfare, or um, the Bible somehow says you can't get involved in politics and warfare, then the Watchtower cannot be a Christian organization because they're involved in politics and warfare. Today, the Watchtower Bible and Tract Society of New York, so we're going back to the New York Corporation, through the Henrietta M. Riley Trust, Henrietta M. Riley was a woman who died in 1945. She bequeathed all her assets be turned into shares. It's called the Henrietta M. Riley Trust. It's autonomous, it's self-owning, so nobody owns it. The Watchtower doesn't own it. It's run by a Detroit bank. I think, I think they're called the Commercia Bank of Detroit. And they do it for a fee. They produce annual accounts for the IRS, Internal Revenue Service so that they can get tax exemption and every year since 1945 annually all after bank fees and if any tax is payable but at the moment they're not paying tax they're, they're applying for tax exemption but after deductions all of the money goes to one sole beneficiary which is the Watchtower Bible and Tract Society of New York. Now the Henrietta M. Rowley Trust has investments in a number of arms companies I mean, could you explain why um, they have shares in Honeywell and Northrop Grumman, which makes the B-2 bomber, and Lockheed Martin? Well, Lockheed Martin, Honeywell, and Northrop Grumman, Northrop Grumman, they make the B-2 bomber, they make military jets for the military. So when you look at the breakdown of the annual accounts, and I've got 15 years of accounts for the Henrietta M. Riley Trust, um, why are they receiving share dividends from arms companies? I agree with you, Jehovah's Witnesses at your level don't pick up guns and fight in the military. I know that. I understand yeah. that. But your parent corporation, the Watchtower Bible and Tract Society of New York, right get share dividends i'm looking at it now honeywell lockheed martin and northrop grumman amongst others they they even they even get share dividends from lionsgate entertainment that does make films but they also make soft pornography 
Yeah. So what's what? How could the Watchtower be God's organization when they knowingly and willingly accept money from arms companies and from another company, Lionsgate Entertainment, that makes soft pornography? Years ago, um, the Henrietta and Raleigh Trust had shares in Morris, which is a tobacco company that makes cigarettes and cigars. Yes. Well, that those shares have been sold. So at the moment, to my knowledge, they don't have shares in Morris. But in the past they did, and the Watchtower accepted that, that money. Now, what utter hypocrisy. At the level of the congregation, if you pick up, uh, if you smoke a cigarette, you as an elder can be disfellowshipped for smoking a cigarette. But yes. the Watchtower Bible and Tract Society of New York, uh, it's about 10, 15 years ago, they were quite happy to accept share dividends from Morris, the tobacco company, through the Henrietta M. Raleigh Trust. This is, this is total hypocrisy, sir. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I hear you, Robert. If you turn to uh, Matthew chapter yeah. 13, yeah. please, and uh, verse 47 yeah. uh, through to 50. Well, if, you, if it's a long passage, you, you read it. Yeah, okay. Again, the kingdom of the heavens is like a dragnet let down into the sea and gathering fish of every kind. When it was full, they hauled it up into the beach, onto the beach, and sitting down, they collected the fine ones in, uh, in, into containers, but the unsuitable one they threw away. That is how it will be in the conclusion of the system of things. The angels will go out and separate the wicked from among the righteous and will cast them into the fiery furnace. There is where the weeping and the gnashing of their teeth will be. So my point being, actually, uh, that we have to just uh, be uh, concerned about that we follow what is recorded in the Bible, uh, what Jesus Christ has commanded, and Jesus had in, has employed his angels to clear up, out all those who are going against his commandments. So the angels will sort out actually any and everyone who are unsuitable ones for his congregation. But the Watchtower corporations are working against what you say are Jesus' commands because they're involved in politics and they are involved in warfare. We do use Watchtower publications. No, 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 no. I'm talking about the Watchtower corporations. The Watchtower corporations have been involved. The Watchtower Bible and Tract Society of New York was involved in the United Nations. They took, in, they took out NGO membership. More recently, even today, various Watchtower corporations, and to go through all of the OSCE meetings attended by Jehovah's Witnesses, we'd be here for hours. But I've given you one example where two Watchtower corporations, the Watchtower Bible and Tract Society of Pennsylvania and the European Association of Jehovah's Christian Witnesses took part in Cordoba in Spain in June 2005 in a political meeting, OSCE, which is another branch of the United Nations. You know, why is the Watchtower involved in politics and warfare? I'll give you one more example, and I don't have very much details about this. Um, one of the Watchtower corporations, and I don't know if it's New York or Pennsylvania, accepted over 5 million shares in the Rancam Engine Corporation. Now, Rancam is a, um engine company that makes... Uh, small ceramic, small engines which have ceramic parts in them so they can get very hot but unlike steel ceramics isn't going to melt um, yeah. so the Rancam Engine Corporation makes small engines for drones and one of the Watchtower corporations accepted 5 million shares in Rancam now I suspect as they're non-voting shares I suspect it was a sleeping partner probably a relative of James McCann, who runs the Rancam Engine Corporation, probably one of his relatives who had um, a half share in the company probably died. And 
wanted their their share to go to the watchtower the watchtower accepted this now this is what i don't understand why did they accept shares in an arms company that makes engines for drones that drops bombs on people in the middle east surely if they are if they are god's organization they would be neutral yeah and uh, because they have monetary I, i'm just uh, applying my thinking actually here robert actually obviously they do appreciate the contributions that are given and some people have made wills and they uh, when they pass on actually they uh, uh, put it actually in their wills or something that their yeah, money um, shares be transferred to Washington society or something of that nature and because they have monetary value do they are they still holding on to it is it uh, public they, they, i don't know they they may well have yeah. sold them the very the very next day but the point is they accepted knowingly accepted shares in an in a company that makes engines for drones called ramcam yeah what it is is because of its financial um value that to the person wanted to give if they continue actually to hold on to the share they become guilty but if they just sell it on actually and because they want to have the financial benefit of, of actually what was passed on to them exactly they want the yeah. money could you imagine jesus accepting shares in an arms company if you offer jesus 5 million shares in a company that drops that powers drones that drops bombs and kills people in the middle east jesus would look you up and down turn his back and walk away he wouldn't accept the shares why did the watchtower accept those 5 million plus shares in the rancam engine corporation yeah and obviously we have gone through actually matthew 13 actually the verses that whoever is responsible for example i need to correct you as well actually i'm not one of the elders uh, robert uh, i am at a very low level actually in are the you, are you a ministerial servant i'm a ministerial servant right, yeah right 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 and yeah so uh, this uh, these three verses that we just uh, had it right three four verses uh, you see jesus takes on uh the judging part actually whoever is responsible and he finds some suitable he will uh he will take action against them do you think jesus will find the watchtower unsuitable because of their involvement in politics and warfare well actually whether he finds it unsuitable or not but what uh, arrangement that has been set up for us here and i'm mainly actually uh, uh very much involved actually at local level uh here in luton beachwood road and that's where our congregation is actually from uh, starting from uh lucy road to it is uh, marsh road area that's where majority of them are mm. i live outside the territory but i go and support that combination this is not so this is not relevant i'm 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 sorry sir this is not relevant um <laughs> there's i mean there are so many other organizations political organizations that jehovah's witnesses have connections to one of them is can be found at uri.org and uri stands for the united religions initiative <laughs> and i'll read from one of the web pages which is um yeah. about fundiathon femus or the femus foundation which is a registered ngo ngo means it is a registered member of the united nations now it states that jehovah's witnesses are involved in this group now i have my theory as to why jehovah's witnesses are, are involved i think it's a very small number of very senior jehovah's witnesses and they're involved but their contribution is minimal so that they can um they can use this as leverage in getting charity status and if they're taken to court they can say to the court your honor the idea that we believe all other 
Christian groups are of the devil is simply not true because we're involved in Fundiaton Femus, the Femus Foundation, with our brother evangelicals and brother Catholics. So I think it's something that they joined just to get to, to uh, cement their charity status and to have a sort of weapon that they can use in court to counter the claim, which is the true claim that Jehovah's Witnesses believe that every other religious group is of the devil. Um, I remember um, the 1975 yearbook, I've got a copy of that, and on, 90, uh, and on page 98 it states that Catholics and Protestants um, are not true Christians, they're, of, they're connected to the devil. But let me just read this um, website, uri.org, and yeah. it's dash who we are, it's cooperation and it's fundiathion dash femus. Fundiathion Femus, Femus Foundation, a registered NGO, that means it's a member of the UN, okay, was created to serve the community in three areas, education, health and the environment. Members are very committed evangelicals, Catholics and Jehovah's Witnesses who have gathered their strength to serve hu humanity and support disabled, needy and deprived people, as well as sharing an interest in work for the safety and protection of the Mother Earth. Members also promote moral and spiritual value values in young people. They work with youth so that they can become a positive they can become positive actors in the community, especially in caring for the environment. Members of FEMAS are proud of their efforts in helping children and the elderly to read and write. Well, I certainly, you know, would admire the fact that they are helping the elderly to read and write and children to read and write and they're supporting disabled and needy people. I, I fully approve of that. I, I believe this is a tiny, tiny group of people. And I believe that Jehovah's Witnesses have joined this just so they can leverage their charity status. And they can also use this as ammunition in court. Because it's well known now that Jehovah's Witnesses demonize every other religious group, including Catholics and Protestants. Um, they teach that they're all of the devil. But by joining URI, the United Religions in Initiative, and this branch of URI, Fundia Theon Femus, what they are really doing is saying, well, we can use this in, in court if we're challenged. We can counter. Um, the official p position of Jehovah's Witnesses, uh, let me see, this is the 1975 yearbook of Jehovah's Witnesses, page 98, Satan has used the Protestants and Catholics to destroy God's remnant. So it seems quite, quite insistent in that you are kind of demonizing um, the Protestant and the Catholic faith. Um, you have also stated similar harsh things in the past regarding um, Catholics and Protestants. For instance, um, Catholics, Protestants and Jews are part of the Devil's Organization. That's the book Life, written in 1925, page 293. Yeah. Um, you even demonize Britain and America. You believe that Britain and America, um, Britain and America together are the false prophet, that's the false prophet of the book of Revelation, who get their authority from the Devil. That's the nation shall know that I am Jehovah dash how, published 1971, page 363. I mean, there's lots and lots of more quotes that I could go into where, where the Watchtower corporations, through their publications, demonize Catholics and Protestants. So it's just incomprehensible to me. Why on earth would Jehovah's Witnesses join the, the United Religions Initiative and work with Catholics and evangelicals? And the obvious answer is to cement their charity status and to have ammunition that they can use in court to counter the quotes that I've just given you. So if somebody yeah. stands up in court and says, Your Honour, Jehovah's Witnesses demonise every other religion on earth, and they believe Catholics and, and evangelicals are of the devil, then in court the Jehovah's Witnesses can stand up and say, Your Honour, and that can't be true because we're involved with our brother Catholics and our brother evangelicals in Fundia Theon Femus, part of the, the United Religions Initiative, but they're not going to tell the court how many Jehovah's Witnesses are involved. 
And I suspect it's a tiny amount of very senior Jehovah's Witnesses who, pay, who take very little, if any, active part in the organisation. This is just done to cement yeah. your charity status and for ammunition in court. Yeah, Robert, I'll restart it because it, it's going to cut off any minute. Okay. Yeah? Okay. Please. All right. Well, thank you. How much time have we got left? Uh, it's uh, three minutes or two minutes now, less than two right, minutes. Right. So in case we just get cut off, it's better yeah. actually okay. I restart now. Um, okay.